Hi guys, you're all very welcome. Uh, my name is David Rice. I'm head chef and owner of Kinsale Gourmet Academy in Banalakara House. Um, so, obviously we're all sitting on lockdown. Um, I've got two young kids at home and stress levels are quite high on cooking for them. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do kind of a cookery series which is called Cooking for Kids in Quarantine. Um, I'm going to show you four basic recipes uh, which would be a red vegetable sauce, a white vegetable sauce, a fast way to roast a chicken, and I'm going to show you how to cook some rice and cool it to keep it nice and safe. From those four base dishes, I'm going to show you how you can make five or six different smaller dishes that are really quick and kids generally love them. So I hope you enjoy the series um, and best of luck with the cooking. Okay, the first thing I want to show you is a really quick way to roast a chicken. Um, so I've got a free range chicken here. I like to prep the chicken on top of a tray that I'm going to use for a simple reason is that my raw chicken isn't coming in contact with um, a chopping board. So it's less hassle in relation to washing up. So what I'm going to do with the chicken is I'm going to remove the string. They generally come tied up. And then you've got your two breasts on top and you've got the two legs. What you want to do is stand the chicken up, get a chopping knife, and we're going to cut down the backbone here. Be very, very careful when you're doing this, okay? And use quite a sharp knife. Once you cut through the backbone, just open up the chicken, okay? And then lay the chicken flat on a tray. The reason I do this is there's two reasons. One, my chicken's gonna cook a lot quicker. All the skin is gonna get nice and crispy. And the second reason is that in a domestic oven, you'd actually nearly be able to cook two or three chickens because they're nice and flat, which means that you could cook a chicken for today, cook a second one which can be used for sandwiches or for lunch the following day. Um, so with this chicken when it's cooked later on, I'm gonna be showing you a few other dishes how you can use the leftover chicken to make really tasty dishes for your kids. So the last step I want to do then, is I'm just going to take off my gloves. We all have gloves at home at this stage, I'd say. So just make sure, season the chicken with some salt, and I've got some olive oil. A good drizzle of olive oil. I generally keep it quite plain at this stage, um, especially when I'm cooking for kids. If I was trying to jazz it up a bit more, I might put some caramel spice on it, some curry powder on. Um, another good tip then as well, is that if you want to keep the chicken nice and moist when it's cooking, I always add in a splash of water into the bottom of the tray, just like that. Or else you could put a splash of white wine. And then I'm basically just going to roast this in the oven at 200 degrees for about 40 minutes. And then I'm going to make sure that the core temperature of the chicken comes up to 74 degrees using a temperature probe. But again, a very quick technique. Chicken cooks quicker and you can cook two or three chickens in a domestic oven at home. Enjoy. So guys, the next thing I want to show you, because no, this, this isn't rocket science, it's very, very straightforward, is that I'm going to cook rice. So in order to have a nice healthy meal, you want to have a balanced meal, which is generally carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Um, when I'm cooking at home for the kids, I always use brown rice. It's got more fiber in it and it's better for the kids. I generally cook twice the amount of rice that I would normally need at home. And the leftover rice would be used for a lunch the following day. Um, the only thing you need to be careful with the rice is that any leftover rice, you cool it quite quickly, which I'll show you in a while, uh, and store it in the fridge. And then you've got a very easy, healthy carbohydrate that you can reheat quickly. Um, and I'll show you how to do like a nice chicken and uh, fried rice with this in a while. So I'm just going to boil it according to the packet instructions, strain it, and then cool it very, very fast, get it into the fridge, and then it'll be ready to rock and roll. Okay. Okay, vegetable sauce. Um, this is probably the most popular dish that I cook in my house for my two kids. They love tomato sauce, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make a vegetable tomato sauce and hide loads of vegetables in the sauce. When the sauce is done, I generally uh, make a large batch and put it into a tinder jar and keep it in the fridge. So after this recipe is done, I'll use this for other recipes later on in the series just to show you how you can just add this sauce to different dishes to get a lot of veg into your kids. Ingredients wise, I have an onion which is peeled, a stick of celery, one leek, carrot that's peeled, I've got half a red pepper, half a yellow pepper, half a courgette, clove of garlic. 
I'm going to use some tomato passata and I have a beef stock cube. So if you're really chefy and big into your cooking, you can chop all these really, really finely. I just use a food processor at home. This thing here is really handy. So I'm just going to cut everything up just into rough, rough chunks. The reason I'm doing this is because I want the vegetables to fry off quicker because it keeps more nutrition into them. Um, so you don't need major knife skills for this. Just give everything a rough chop and that's just going to help the blender pulse up the vegetables a little bit easier. So I'm just chopping all these and throwing them in here. And to be honest with you at home when I'm doing this, I will chop the veg like that. I'll have my kids beside me and they'll just throw it into the blender. It's, it just gets them involved in cooking, which is quite good. And it helps kill the time. So chop these up. Obviously don't overfill the blender. So everything is quite rustic in there. So I'm just gonna blitz this up now. So guys, everything is chopped up really quick. All right, it's a lot safer. Um, again, it's not a Michelin star restaurant we're cooking at home here. So in my pan, a bit of oil, drop in my vegetables. When you're sweating off your vegetables, always add in some salt. We're going to fry these vegetables until they're nice and soft and become sweet naturally. Then I'm going to add in some passata, enough to cover the vegetables. I'm going to add in some half a beef stock, cook it for three or four minutes, blitz it up to a smooth sauce and then that's my base red vegetable sauce done which I will use in different dishes later on. It's extremely simple. Okay so um, the vegetable tomato sauce is on. I like to make these sauces on the same day. It just makes life a lot easier to get everything done in one day. And then you have, a, you have all your ingredients ready to rock and roll, putting together the different dishes I'll show you later on. So, white vegetable sauce. Ingredients wise, I've got a peeled onion, I've got a small leek, I've got some celery, courgette, half courgette, two cloves of garlic. And then to make the complete body of this sauce, what I have here is a head of cauliflower, which I've just roughly broken up or chopped up. Again, if you have a food processor, you don't need major knife skills for this. So I'm just gonna blitz this up like I did earlier on with the, um, with the vegetable sauce for the tomatoes. So the cauliflower goes in. Just help your blitzer a little bit by roughly chopping up some of the, um, the other vegetables. And then my courgette, I'm just gonna chop it up like that. So same idea as the other sauce. Everything's roughly chopped, and then we're gonna blitz it up so it's nice and fine. So guys, everything is roughly chopped up, and you can see there's a little chunk of cauliflower here. That does not matter, because we'll be blitzing the sauce again later on. Um, so I'm just going to tip this into a saucepan with some olive oil and begin to fry that off slowly, again adding a pinch of salt. So guys, um, I've sweated off the vegetables here for both sauces for about 5 to 10 minutes. Now this is very very important that you sweat them so they're nice and sweet. When making sauces, especially for kids, if I fry off my onions and garlic and they're not nice and soft and I blitz up the sauce, you're going to get a strong taste of onion and garlic which the kids will then pick up and then they won't eat the food by gently sweating off the vegetables on a medium temperature you release natural sugars in the vegetables which then will make it more pleasant to eat especially for the kids so you can see my vegetables here are very very soft all right so some tomato passata i'm just going to put in enough just to cover the vegetables And then I'm going to reduce that down to a simmer. I'm going to boil it for maybe three or four minutes and then blitz it up. And I'm going to crumble in some of the beef stock cube in here as well to taste. 
only add in a small bit of the beef stock cube. It's very, very easy to add more in later, but you can't take it out. And then with the white vegetable sauce, instead of using tomato, I'm just gonna put some water in. Again, just enough to cover the vegetables. Oh, it's quite nice as well. You could put in half water, half milk, or else water and a splash of cream. Um, and then, so I'm putting chicken stock cube into this. Just blitz it in like that. Again, bring this to the boil, blitz it up. So both sauces probably take 10 or 15 minutes to make from start to finish. But the vital thing is to make sure you sweat the vegetables off slowly, and by sweat, I mean cook at a low temperature to bring out the natural sweetness from the veg. So the two sauces now are, are cooked, um, our vegetables are nice and soft. So all I'm going to do very, very simply is I'm going to blitz them up. So if you are doing this at home and you have one blitzer, blitz up the white one first. Because then you don't have to wash it out for the red one. So I'm just going to blitz it up with this fella again. And then I'm going to put the sauce into my kinder jar. Then we put up our tomato and vegetable sauce. So guys, there are the two sauces done. As you can see, the consistency of them is quite thick at the moment. That's perfectly okay. Very, very easy to thin them down when we're using them later on. Try and make them a little bit thicker than you might think is necessary. And then when we're cooking dishes, like when I'm cooking some pasta dishes later on, some of the cooking liquid off the pasta, I will use that to naturally thin down the sauce. So again, we've got our tomato sauce. So we've got seven different types of veg in here. And we have our white base sauce here, which is the cauliflower is kind of the main unit, our ingredient in this one. Um, but again, they'll keep in the fridge for two to three days. Done. So guys, just to show you as well, so my rice, um, which I cooked earlier on, I strained it off, I left it onto a tray, let it out at room temperature for 10 or 15 minutes, and then I put that into a fridge to cool it down really well for about a half an hour, and then at that stage then I'll store it in an airtight container. And that rice will be okay to use for at least two to three days, as long as it's kept cool in the fridge. And then, with my chicken here, my chicken is cooked. This took 50 minutes. Um, I'm just using a temperature probe, if you don't have one at home, 50, 55 minutes at 200 degrees will definitely cook it. Um, it's up at 82 degrees, which I know it's perfectly cooked. So a temperature probe is a good investment at home. So at this stage now, I've cooked for maybe 45 minutes to an hour. I've got my rice done and cooled, I've got a chicken done, and I have my two sauces done. And from here now, the rest of the recipes in the series, We'll be showing you quick, easy ways to use these base ingredients to make really good dishes for cooking for your kids.